Welcome to Elevate Your Mind, where we explore strategies for cultivating a growth-oriented life. Today, we delve into the power of mindset with practical tips and insights from our special guests. So grab a notebook and get ready to elevate your thinking with us. Let's dive right in. Phoenix, could you start us off by highlighting the key differences between a fixed and growth mindset? Absolutely, Luna. At its core, a fixed mindset is the belief that our abilities, intelligence, and talents are static traits. People with a fixed mindset often avoid challenges, give up easily, and see effort as fruitless if success isn't immediate. On the other hand, a growth mindset thrives on challenge and sees failures not as evidence of unintelligence, but as a heartening springboard for growth and for stretching our existing abilities. That's a fantastic overview, Phoenix. To add to that, one of the most empowering aspects of adopting a growth mindset is the understanding that effort can fundamentally change our abilities. This means viewing challenges as opportunities to learn rather than insurmountable obstacles. It's interesting how mindset can affect our approach to life's challenges. Arya, in your experience, how does this shift from a fixed to a growth mindset impact personal development? Great question, Luna. The shift can be transformative. When individuals embrace a growth mindset, they start to view their journey as a series of learning experiences. This not only increases resilience, but also fosters a culture of continuous improvement. They are more likely to take calculated risks, embrace feedback, and persevere through setbacks, which are all critical elements for personal and professional growth. And to build on Arya's point, cultivating a growth mindset isn't just about personal achievement. It's also about contributing to a larger community. When we're open to learning and growing, we're more likely to share our experiences and insights, which in turn can inspire and uplift those around us. That's a powerful perspective. It shows how adopting a growth mindset can lead to a more fulfilling and interconnected life. Speaking of which, could you share some actionable advice for our listeners on how to foster a growth mindset? Certainly. One practical step is to become more aware of your own mindset. Listen to the language you use with yourself. Are you telling yourself that you can't do something because you're not good at it? Try to reframe those thoughts to reflect a growth mindset by saying something like, I'm not good at this yet, but I can improve with practice and effort. Another tip is to focus on the process, not just the outcome. Celebrate the effort and the learning that happens along the way. This helps to internalize the value of persistence and hard work, which are key components of a growth mindset. Those are incredibly valuable tips. It's important to remember that fostering a growth mindset is a journey, not a destination. It takes conscious effort and daily practice. Absolutely, Luna. And tying this back to our broader topic of goal setting and achievement, adopting a growth mindset is crucial. Let's dive into how this mindset plays a role in effectively mapping your path to success. Phoenix, could you share your insights on how setting goals is different when you have a growth mindset? Of course, Aria. When you have a growth mindset, goal setting transforms from a rigid target setting exercise into a flexible, learning oriented journey. Instead of focusing solely on the end result, individuals with a growth mindset set goals that emphasize improvement and learning. For instance, rather than setting a goal to simply win a competition, a growth-oriented goal would be to improve my skills and performance in the competition. This shift encourages resilience and adaptability, making it more likely to achieve and exceed those goals. That's a profound way to look at goal setting. It suggests that the journey itself is just as important as the destination. Arya, from your experience, how can someone start to integrate this approach into their daily life or long-term planning? One effective strategy is to break down larger goals into smaller, manageable tasks that focus on skill development and personal growth. This makes the process less daunting and more actionable. Additionally, celebrating small victories along the way can reinforce a growth mindset, making the overall journey more rewarding. So, it's not just about achieving the goal, but also about who you become in the process. Exactly, 
And to add to that, reflection plays a crucial role in this journey. Regularly reflecting on your progress helps you to recognize your achievements and learn from the challenges you've faced. This not only motivates you, but also directs your focus towards continuous improvement, vital for both goal setting and achievement. Reflection is indeed powerful. It reminds me of the saying, what we learn with pleasure, we never forget. Speaking of learning, how important is it to set learning goals as part of the overall goal setting process? It's incredibly important, Luna. Setting specific learning goals ensures that you are constantly developing new skills and knowledge, which is essential for navigating the complexities of both personal and professional life. It also ensures that you're prepared for future challenges and opportunities. By making learning a goal, you embody the very essence of a growth mindset, which sees every experience as an opportunity to grow. And let's not forget the importance of adaptability in goal setting and achievement. With a growth mindset, individuals are more prepared to adjust their goals as they learn and grow. This flexibility can be critical when faced with unforeseen challenges or when discovering new passions and strengths. It's about mapping your path to success, but being open to rerouting as necessary. Adaptability, learning, and reflection. These are key components of both a growth mindset and effective goal setting. As we continue to explore the mapping of one's path to success, it's clear that the journey is enriched by these principles. Speaking of enriching our journeys, another integral aspect that aligns beautifully with a growth mindset and goal setting is time management mastery. It's fascinating how managing our time effectively can drastically enhance our productivity. Phoenix, how do you see the relationship between time management and a growth mindset? That's a great question, Aria. Time management and a growth mindset are deeply intertwined. With a growth mindset, individuals understand that time is a valuable resource for learning and improvement. Effective time management allows us to allocate our time wisely towards activities that foster growth, such as learning new skills or tackling challenging projects. By viewing time as an opportunity for development, we can maximize our productivity in both personal and professional realms. It's interesting to think of time as a resource for growth. Could you share some strategies for mastering time management that our listeners can start applying today? Absolutely, Luna. One effective strategy is prioritization. By identifying the most important tasks that align with our goals and dedicating the necessary time to them, we ensure that our efforts are focused and impactful. This involves saying no to less important tasks and distractions, which is a skill that complements the growth mindset beautifully. Another strategy is the use of planning tools and techniques, like the Eisenhower box or time blocking. These can help us visually organize our tasks based on urgency and importance, making it easier to see where our time should be spent. Coupling this with a growth mindset, we're not just managing our time, we're strategically investing it in our growth. I love the idea of investing time in our growth. It shifts the narrative from simply spending time to making an investment in our future selves. Aria, in your work, how have you seen effective time management impact personal development? The impact is profound, Luna. I've observed that individuals who master time management tend to achieve their goals more efficiently and experience less stress and overwhelm. This positive feedback loop encourages a more adventurous approach to goal setting as they're not bogged down by the fear of losing time, but are motivated by the growth they're experiencing. It's truly transformative, aligning perfectly with the essence of a growth mindset. And let's not overlook the role of reflection in time management. Regularly reviewing how we spend our time can reveal insights into our habits, priorities, and areas for improvement. This reflective practice is another hallmark of a growth mindset, allowing us to constantly evolve our strategies for maximizing productivity. Reflection, prioritization, and strategic planning. These are powerful tools for mastering time management and by extension, maximizing our productivity. As we navigate our busy lives, it's clear that adopting a growth mindset not only enhances our personal development, but also empowers us to manage our time more effectively 
leading to a more productive and fulfilling life. It's all about making the most of the time we have, isn't it? Embedding these practices into our daily routines can really set the stage for achieving remarkable things, both personally and professionally. Speaking of achieving remarkable things, it's impossible to ignore the elephant in the room, the role of failure in personal growth. Considering our discussion on a growth mindset, how should we approach failures and setbacks in a way that propels us forward rather than holding us back? That's a very timely question, Luna. Within the framework of a growth mindset, failure is not a marker of inefficacy or the end of the road. Rather, it's a valuable feedback mechanism. It's crucial to understand that every successful person has encountered numerous failures along the way. The key difference is how they perceived and responded to those failures. By analyzing what went wrong and what can be learned, failure becomes a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. I completely agree, Phoenix. It's about shifting the narrative from I failed to I learned. This doesn't mean that experiencing failure becomes easy, but it does mean we give ourselves permission to learn, adapt, and try again. This resilience, powered by a growth mindset, is what ultimately contributes to our personal and professional development. That's a really empowering way to look at it. Can you share some examples or strategies for reframing failure as a learning opportunity? Absolutely. One effective strategy is to conduct a failure post-mortem. This involves taking a step back to objectively analyze the situation, identifying both the factors that were within your control and those that weren't. Ask yourself, what worked, what didn't, and what can I do differently next time? This process not only demystifies the failure, but also empowers you to take actionable steps towards improvement. Another strategy is to cultivate a culture of sharing failures within your community or team. When we share our failures and the lessons learned, it not only humanizes us, but also enriches our collective wisdom. This shared vulnerability fosters a stronger, more supportive environment where growth is nurtured. Those are fantastic points. It seems that embracing failure is not just beneficial for individual growth, but it can also transform the dynamics of a community or team. In your experiences, how has acknowledging and learning from failure led to breakthrough moments or success? In my own journey, embracing failure led to my first best-selling book. Initially, I faced countless rejections from publishers, which was disheartening. However, each rejection provided insights into how I could improve my proposal and manuscript. Ultimately, this process of refinement and persistence paid off. Had I not seen those rejections as opportunities for growth, I might have given up too soon. Similarly, in my coaching practice, some of the most profound breakthroughs with clients have come after a perceived failure. It's often in the aftermath of failing to reach a goal that clients gain clarity on their true desires and the obstacles that were holding them back. Through reflection and re-strategizing, these setbacks have catapulted my clients to levels of success they hadn't imagined possible. These stories highlight a crucial aspect of personal growth, the willingness to face setbacks head on and learn from them. It's clear that failure when approached with a growth mindset can indeed be a powerful catalyst for development and success. Building on that, transitioning from failure to success demonstrates the foundational role of strong habits in a growth-oriented life. How do strong habits facilitate this journey, especially in the context of overcoming setbacks and embracing a growth mindset? Great question, Luna. Strong habits are essentially the building blocks of a growth-oriented life. They provide the structure and discipline necessary to make continuous improvement a part of our daily lives. For instance, a habit of reflecting on your day each evening can help you identify lessons and areas for growth, reinforcing a growth mindset. Similarly, a habit of setting daily goals keeps you focused on improvement and learning, even in the face of setbacks. Absolutely, Phoenix. And it's worth noting that cultivating these strong habits requires intentionality and patience. For example, developing the habit of seeking constructive feedback can be challenging initially due to our natural aversion to criticism. 
However, when we consistently practice this, it becomes second nature, and we start to see feedback as a valuable tool for growth and improvement. That's a critical point, Arya. It seems like building strong habits also means breaking down the barriers of our comfort zones. How can our listeners start to develop these growth-oriented habits in a practical, manageable way? Starting small is key. Choose one growth-oriented habit you want to develop and focus on that until it becomes part of your routine. For instance, if you want to get better at handling feedback, you might start by asking a trusted friend or colleague for input on a specific area of your work or life. Gradually, you can expand this practice by seeking feedback from more people and in different contexts. And it's helpful to remember the power of consistency over intensity. It's better to practice a new habit for five minutes daily than to do it for an hour once a week. This consistent approach helps to reinforce the habit making it a natural part of your daily life. For example, dedicating a few minutes each morning to set your intentions for the day can profoundly impact your mindset and productivity. Consistency over intensity, that's a powerful mantra for habit formation. It underscores the importance of regular small actions over occasional grand gestures. In this journey of building strong habits for a growth-oriented life, how do we maintain motivation? especially when progress seems slow or invisible. One effective strategy is to track your progress, no matter how small. Keeping a journal or log where you note down your daily or weekly accomplishments can be incredibly motivating. It allows you to see the cumulative effect of your efforts over time, which can be very encouraging, especially when you're not seeing immediate results. And connecting with a community or group of like-minded individuals pursuing similar goals can provide an additional layer of motivation and support. Sharing your progress, challenges, and strategies with others creates a sense of accountability and belonging, which can be incredibly motivating during those inevitable periods of slow progress. The idea of community brings a whole new dimension to personal growth. It's fascinating how our individual journey of building strong habits and cultivating a growth mindset can be amplified by the collective wisdom and support of a community. As we navigate these paths, both independently and collectively, it's clear that the principles of growth, learning, and resilience are universally applicable. Absolutely, Luna. And it's important to remember that this journey is unique for everyone. What works for one person might not work for another so it's crucial to remain flexible and open to trying different strategies until you find what works best for you. Definitely, Phoenix. And as we continue to explore and share these strategies, we create a richer, more diverse toolkit for personal and collective growth. It's about embracing the journey, learning from each other, and continuously striving for improvement and fulfillment in our lives. Speaking of striving for improvement and fulfillment, a significant barrier that many of us face on this journey are our own limiting beliefs. These beliefs can often hold us back from achieving our full potential. Arya, could you shed some light on how these limiting beliefs form and how they can affect us? Certainly, Luna. Limiting beliefs are often rooted in our past experiences, cultural norms, and the messages we've received from others. For example, if you've been told repeatedly that you're not a good public speaker, you might internalize this belief and avoid situations that require you to speak in public. Over time, this belief can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, limiting your career growth and personal development. The key to overcoming these beliefs is to first recognize them and then challenge their validity. That's an excellent point, Aria. And it's important to add that once we recognize these limiting beliefs, we can start to challenge them by gathering evidence that contradicts them. For instance, if you believe you're not good at public speaking, you could start by speaking in smaller, more comfortable settings and gradually build up to larger audiences. Each positive experience builds a new, empowering belief that you are capable of public speaking. That's a very actionable strategy, Phoenix. It goes to show that by taking small steps, we can gradually dismantle those limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering ones. 
Phoenix, in your experience, what are some common limiting beliefs that people struggle with and how can they overcome them? A common one I encounter is the belief that I'm not good enough. This belief can be paralyzing, preventing individuals from pursuing their goals and dreams. Overcoming this belief starts with self-compassion and recognizing that making mistakes and facing setbacks is a part of being human. Setting small, achievable goals and celebrating those achievements can also help to build self-efficacy and reinforce the belief that you are indeed good enough. Adding to that, another pervasive limiting belief is, it's too late for me to change. This belief can keep people stuck in unsatisfying situations. The truth is, it's never too late to change. Highlighting stories of individuals who have made significant life changes later in life can serve as powerful motivation for overcoming this belief. Stories of transformation and change can indeed serve as powerful antidotes to limiting beliefs. It seems that identifying, challenging, and replacing limiting beliefs with empowering ones is a critical aspect of unlocking our full potential. As we wrap up today's discussion, could each of you share a final thought or piece of advice for our listeners on their journey to overcoming limiting beliefs and unlocking their potential? My advice would be to practice self-reflection regularly. Understand where your limiting beliefs come from and actively work on reframing them. Remember, you are the author of your life story and you have the power to rewrite the narratives that no longer serve you. And my piece of advice is to surround yourself with people who uplift and support you. Having a support system can make all the difference in overcoming limiting beliefs. When you have people who believe in you, it becomes easier to start believing in yourself. That's sage advice from both of you. Overcoming limiting beliefs is indeed a journey, one that requires courage, self-compassion, and support. As we conclude today's episode, I'd like to thank our guests, Aria Summers and Phoenix Stone, for their invaluable insights and practical tips. And thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Elevate Your Mind. Remember, unlocking your potential begins with challenging those limiting beliefs and embracing the journey of growth. Until next time, keep elevating your mind and broadening your horizons. Goodbye.